Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is my review of Batman Gotham Knights number four. It's funny when uh, DC started doing these digital exclusives, uh, or not exclusives, <laughs> digital first that are actually digital second, whatever. Um, I was doing it just because I needed content, but uh, I have grown to, well, not love them, but like them. Um, I've had a lot of issues with uh, DC, well, not really issues, they're just kind of not my thing. I feel uh, a lot of stuff, you know, you got characters named Major Disaster. <laughs> but also, like, the whole, and especially Scott Snyder made everything worse. Because now it's just like, okay, so I know about, you know, you know, uh, New Gods. I know about the Source Wall. Oh, do you know about the Source Wall before the Source Wall? No. Do you know about the Source Wall after the Source Wall? Oh, geez, let me guess, Scott Snyder. Did you know the source wall is not a source wall, but it's actually two beans, one named source and one named wall. And they've been, let me guess, from the beginning of the universe, they planned everything. Well, this Batman, Batman Gotham Knights is literally like, Batman fights Clayface. Batman fights Poison Ivy. Batman fights Joker. And they're kind of awesome. So we may have solved the mystery of who Michael Gray is. Rich Johnson did an article a couple days ago. He said he spoke to him and he said he wasn't very mysterious. He was just a guy who had a contract that he could only, you know, work on this project at this time. So he had to use a, a pen name. This is a fairly common use for pen names. Uh, because Mark Russell's, this issue, not only does it have the same artistic team, but in writing style and length of story, it matches with the previous two. So what is this story about? Batman fighting the Joker. <laughs> And also like capitalism. Um, so the story is very, very simple, but kind of fun. Weirdly enough, this story could have been told by basically every live action and animated. Like this could have been a Batman the Animated Series episode. It could have been an Adam West episode. It could have been, uh, you know, a, a little scene from Batman Forever. It's basically Bruce Wayne in his uh, secret identity hanging out at the, you know, at the uh, uh, Bushwood um, uh, golf course with the other uh, rich white people. <laughs> yeah, they might, some of them might be Middle Eastern. Um, and they're discussing the evilness of being rich. Now, the stupid thing is all of these guys right in front of the help, uh, this flat-chested, uh, we're later to find out as a woman, um, uh, and they're literally like, hey, rich, evil white guy. Sorry, that was redundant. Remember the crime we did? I forgot to tell you all the details of it. So they literally just like, ha ha ha, ha ha ha, I commit an extortion. Ha 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 ha, I bribe people. Ha ha ha, pollution. This guy pollutes like a character out of Captain Planet. My lawyer says it's best if I don't know where we're dumping the chemicals. That said, I wouldn't drink the tap water if I were you. What, 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 this is 1970. <laughs> Um, so uh, the evil, rich, mostly white guys are discussing their crimes at, in Greece? I don't know. Uh, and then they're laughing evilly. They're checking out the flat-chested uh, waiter. And then Bruce Wayne's on the case. He's there. <laughs> Boy, this is just really not caring. He's like, excuse me, I have to go not change into being Batman. Batman? <laughs> what a coincidence. Bruce Wayne was just not changing into you, and he jumped out and started beating us at the freaking country club. I have to say one thing. This right here, please look at the screen, is one of the best Batman arms I have ever seen in my life. This is a classic thing of comic books. Can you draw muscular dudes, beautiful women, really well? And this is a freaking masterpiece. Now, the rest of it is... It's Ryan Benjamin. I'm using the uh, Moses uh, <laughs> uh, pronunciation of Benjamin. Benjamin. Ryan Benjamin, inked by Richard Friend. Now, I like both of these, you know, artists, but I've consistently noticed since the 1990s that, like, <sighs> Ryan Benjamin varies wildly <laughs> in style from panel to panel. Um, so here's the the evil rich white guy. I think that guy might be Middle Eastern. Um, 
uh, and they're in jail, and and um, it's it's so simple. I love it. So the plot twist is it's it's ninety nine cents. Go buy it. It's a recommend. Go buy it. Okay, you're back. It's a uh, Joker is uh, offering like a, a a lawyer service for um, evil rich white guys to help him out. Now of course he's Joker, so he's gonna end up you know. Uh, <laughs> I love this stuff. They're like, hey Bruce, thank God you didn't get arrested. I hope no one finds. Our secret thing right here. And then he goes in immediately, you know, like, breaking news. The case against the Gotham billionaires deepens. A daring raid by Batman has netted millions in cash and what appears to be forged passports. <laughs> and they're like, are you kidding me? How can you not see what's happening? So anyway, it's the Joker. I'm, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, so Bruce Wayne gets thrown in and then the Joker is here and he's doing like a commercial. Um, it's fine. There's a couple of twisteroos. I was thoroughly entertained the entire time, except for the, this tangent on this flag, which is driving me insane. Um, but yeah, it's very simple. It's Batman. He's trying to take down some white collar criminals. It's Joker trying to trick people and threaten people and make some money. I like this stuff. Uh, oh, and I totally forgot to show all this stuff. So here's Iron Sights uh, 1 and 2 on someone's shelves lining up. Happy about that. Here's a uh, Detective Pikachu reading Iron Sights 2. Uh, <laughs> this was a, a female fan saying, yeah, I don't have guns. I'm a girl. So here's my dolls. Um, uh, this is a whole bunch of um, comic books with some mood lighting. I see some uh, My Hero Magadamia. No, I'm that's the parody. My Hero Act. My Hero Academia. Got all my books right there. Got some, uh, uh, what was it? Street Fighter, Scott Pilgrim, Suzuka. I've never heard of that. Battle Angel Alita. I like the movie. I've never read the manga. I see some Everglade Angels up there. What in the name of Hopalong Cassidy is going on with this rifle? Is that an actual, is that a real rifle? No, there's not even a trigger. It's like a, I don't know what's going on there. Go to all my books plus Cyber Frog. And then here's a bunch of books, many of which I've never heard of. And there is a Nintendo Switch with a knife <laughs> hidden behind it. Here's some guitars. And okay. So uh, anyway, um, yeah, it's a recommend. 99 cents. Why not? Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for uh, notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're finding original, original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description. Uh, Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar. Pandemic comic book. Oh man, everyone's just progressing very nicely. Jawbreakers Grand Bazaar about to uh, hit 90,000. Um, I think I will announce the next stretch goal when not at 90,000. I've just been told this guy Thor Odinson, he keeps track of the top 25. Although I'm recording this today, it's going to come out tomorrow, so it'll probably happen by then. Once once Jawbreakers gets into the top 25 of, of Indiegogo um, uh, uh, projects, then comic projects, then I will announce the $100,000 stretch goal. Pandemic. Oh, geez, almost 11000 for the second one. And then Expendables go to hell just... Chugging along quite nicely. See that, you know, made another 600 backers, you know, since the uh, campaign ended. Just nice. This actually might eventually end up getting up to, you know, 250,000, which is what, um, uh, uh, it's what God King made. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, thanks for watching.